you know what we'll have a good season certain players like Reese James and Gallagher are going to play really well and we're going to be able to sell them for a very high price so is that their plan there was some hedge fund guys giving a PPT showing a PPT to Bali and then he's like yeah yeah that's it I think that's what happened yeah. I hate United because I'm an Arsenal fan yeah. I hate Chelsea yeah. because I'm a human being yeah what do you think of Chelsea's FFP situation no I'm actually more confused I think Like I was speaking to you earlier about this. They say that Chelsea need to sell players by, by what, June? 30th June, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, from what I understand, even if... So, this is based on the decisions that they made last season. Like, in the summer transfer window and the winter transfer window. So, yeah. so even if this season were perfect, right? And they're top of the league. And they are... I think they're already in the FA Cup semi-finals, right? So, yeah. nothing... They, they, they weren't even in the Europa. So, that is not going to change. And I think... It, we don't have to consider the Carling Cup in this equation that they would have won it or something. But apart from that... Okay, they're top of the league. And they're in the FA Cup semi-final. And even if they finish the season... Okay, obviously, they're not going to win it. But they finish in the top four. I don't think they would have gotten any money that would have made things different. They would still be in the same financial situation. So, what was the initial plan? So, I think the argument here Or is... Or am I wrong huh? in my understanding? Because no, no, I don't no, no, think the UFA right. money comes so soon. I think it comes at the end of the season or something like that. No, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely bang on. I think the idea, overall idea was like if this season they can get Europa at least... So hmm. at least by the end of next season, they can get that, uh, you know, Europa League revenue in or whatever that European revenue hmm. in. And this season, basically summer of 20, they can survive by just selling off a few of those players, right? So like, let's say 100 million, sell four players for 100 million. And then all of the amortization costs or FFP costs have been covered for this season. And then next season, because they're in, the Euro- because they're in European competition, they'll be able to cover it next season. But now, given their problems and their situation right now, obviously, they have to sell this season. But then next season also, they're not in Europe. Or even if they are, it wouldn't lead to any significant amount of money because Conference League probably won't get you anywhere. So then next season, at the end of next season, they will have to sell the players again. And who's to say how the performance will be next season, given like how strong Arsenal, City, other teams are, right? In the league, Liverpool, other teams are. So But, it kind okay, of it becomes like a rolling barrel. Let's forget about the future. Let's just yeah. think about this this particular thing that whatever, the... Wagma they're in right now. So, what was the plan at that time? Were they thinking, you know what, we'll have a good season, certain players like Reese James and Gallagher are going to play really well and we're going to be able to sell them for a very high price. So, is that their plan? Like, in like imagine, last year they decided, in- like, we're going to do well, these players are going to play well and we're going to sell them to cover the cost of all the new players that we bought right now. Like, I don't understand. Like, what... Imagine, did- I'll tell you, in the hmm. scenario, imagine replace Chelsea with Tottenham, right? Hmm. So, if you go ahead and sell, try to sell Tottenham's players they will probably I mean they're not in top they're, they're not challenging for the title right but they are in and around they're top 4 top 5 top 6 whatever so if Chelsea players perform to the same level and given the amount mm. of money that they've spent let's say Palmer mm. right if they were to go and sell Palmer next season it'll probably go for like mm. 70, 80, 90 whatever you want to ask for him right so if the idea was yeah. in my head that's what I'm thinking like just giving them the benefit of the doubt that if they had performed even significantly not significantly but like even a little bit better cohesively and shown their skills they could have sold those players in the like for example Broya you know that Broya is not going to be in your first team but if he had scored in let's say 6, 7, 8 goals he could have gone for like 30 million next season I mean right now you won't even pay 10 million for Broya be like, so, yeah. so that was the plan like oh, that should have been the plan this kid, I mean, this kid the Cole Palmer this kid Cole Palmer who's uh, 19 years old who's hardly played football he's going to be so insane we're going to sell him for yeah. and this guy Broha who also has been underwhelming he's going to suddenly become good this season and we're going to sell him for 40 what kind of planning is that That's like, stupid. How does 100%. it make any sense? It does not. So the basically and, hedged and... bets. So just one point. So it's a basically hedged bets on selling on selling a player, thinking that okay, these guys will magically kind of you know exponentially <laughs> yeah. be yeah. somewhere in value without giving them a platform to develop. How yeah. brain dead yeah. is that? Like and and are, I guess they yeah. didn't bring into the equation the fact that everybody knowing that Chelsea has to offload so and so players will bring down their value because of. It's just the market forces, right? Yeah. Demand yeah. and supply. So they didn't. I think they didn't yeah. account for any of that. It was some hedge fund guys giving a PPT, showing a PPT to Bali, and then he's like, "Yeah, yeah, that's it." I think that's what happened. And also Euros, right? Like, imagine how many clubs hold back their budgets yeah. just because yeah. from for like breakout Euro stars, there'll be a youngster <laughs> from Romania killing it, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, let's get him." So they'll be saving like 20 million for 2025 for that guy, and they won't be spending. I think, I think someone in the boardroom must have brought up that point, and they kicked him out of the room. 
Why is this guy being so negative, man? That was too cool. I mean, no matter whatever it is, I am definitely thoroughly enjoying it. Like, I just I've had so many of like those Wenger Mourinho moments. I am actually enjoying their fate, and it, all of it is like brought onto themselves by by their own doing. So great. But but would you say that uh, they have increased the economic equality or reduced the economic inequality, the financial inequality in the Premier League by uh, just? throwing money around yeah by being like, so stupid you know, like, they're just uh, <laughs> splashing their credit card around like they just went and like categorized themselves in the mid like no one buys a club at top level it was level a wealth transfer like... it was a large wealth transfer yeah, they're, they're <laughs> the robin hoods yeah, yeah the mean, stupid like... robin hoods for the premier league <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, it's kind of like a circle, right? It's a karmic. I mean, not to get into like a lot of spirituality and ideology and all of those things, but it's a karmic circle. Like they inflated the Premier League and the mm-hmm. wages and the transfer fees, everything in the first place into people whenever they came on. So mm-hmm. uh, maybe it's it's one of those things that it's coming back to bite them. But uh, yeah, that's all we can do. Bro. That's all. That's all Wenger has taught us. Being philosophical. That's all we know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, no, but, but I, I think I'm definitely enjoying this Chelsea don't for AJ to ask you what you, what you said. My, my yeah. hate for Chelsea is very organic. Like, you know, it, it's not it's not manufactured like how I have it for United, right? Because United, yeah. I was told that I should hate United. As a Liverpool yeah. fan, I should hate United. That is basically like... There's, that saying, past... there's that saying, right? I yeah. hate United because I'm an Arsenal fan. Yeah. I hate Chelsea yeah. because I'm a human being. Exactly. <laughs> I'm saying this is, it's very, I mean, he, Chelsea basically are a model club for me. Okay, this is what a club shouldn't do. And this is how a club should, you know, you, should, you can just hate a club for, right? And everything oh. that they've done from starting from Mourinho era, everything that they've done, even and the 20, I would the also argue champion. they started mm-hmm. this tradition of like such like very high manager turnover. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Firing yeah. managers. Yeah. No, I think that's basically it. I think they have been this club, which I love to hate. And I'm glad this is happening to them. So, yeah, yeah. long made it continue i guess yeah so funny like that one war in ukraine affected mm-hmm. <laughs> we only affected like a club from south like london the most and ukraine didn't actually i'm, I'm not saying ukraine is a fault but whatever because of ukraine this happened and it wasn't done yeah it was going to say also, something <laughs> really politically incorrect <laughs> No, 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 no. Because Mikhailo Mudrik, right? They paid 100 million for him. So, the Ukraine saga continues. <laughs> like, Chelsea board were having a meeting. Like, how do we make the, our cul- club's cultural history correct? Like, let's spend 100 million on the Ukrainian PR problem solved. Like, oh my god. How can we screw Arsenal and also be culturally correct at the same time? Let's get Mudrik. <laughs> <laughs>